In this paper, we present the vector drawing tool that automates the depiction of stylized materials. After creating a line drawing, artists can use our tool to assign a material to each region. Our tool represents each material with common vector primitives, such as color fills, paths, and gradient meshes. Users can optionally refine the resulting primitives to further adjust appearance as necessary. Artists have traditionally relied on a number of techniques to depict the appearance of materials. Books on drawing and illustration present instructions explaining how to render common materials. For example, artists draw reflections with an abstract environment or by alternating dark and bright bands over cylindrical objects. For glossy materials like plastic, artists only draw the brightest light sources like the sky dome or a window. Transparent objects are often drawn over a colored background. In addition, artists draw multiple highlights as well as total internal reflections to delineate the shape of these objects. Translucent objects scatter light through internal reflections, which artists depict by brightening the parts of the object that are directly opposite from the point at which the light strikes the surface. The following effects are obtained in vector graphics by a combination of path drawing, gradient fill, and layer blending operations. We have collected and distilled these artistic guidelines, representing them as shade trees over vector primitives. To combine their nodes, we use standard blending operations. The tree representation allows us to depict complex materials in vector art as illustrated with the plastic and glass trees here. We distinguish between several node types. Base nodes encode the diffuse shading over the shape. Reflection nodes represent highlight and abstract environments. Transparency and translucency nodes attenuate the background color. Combined together, these node types can express many further materials, such as chrome and cloth. In the following, we demonstrate the capabilities of our solution as well as its user interface. To paint an object, we first assign materials to its regions. We choose from a set of predefined material types with a default appearance. Next, we specify the orientation of the individual surface regions, which allows us to manipulate lighting consistently later on. We then choose a light direction for the entire object. To depict concave patches, we inverse the light direction on them. Finally, we modify the default appearance by editing the tree nodes. Here, we paint the stapler's base in red by copying the base palette from a red glossy plastic patch to a green rough plastic one. We again use base palette editing to depict the reddish reflection from nearby surfaces onto chrome. Our tool also allows the manipulation of the position of the horizon line in reflections. Artists use this technique to give a cue of whether an object is viewed from above or below. Here we show how to change the shape of the highlight. We next show some further results obtained using our solution.